there everybody and welcome back to the Blossom Crochet channel. If this is your first time visiting my channel then do make sure that you click that subscribe button and the little bell icon so that you can keep up to date with all of my crochet tutorials. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful classic almost vintagey style baby blanket. I'm calling it a vintagey inspired pattern because the stitches and the colour to me just seems like really classic and really really beautiful. So you can see we're made up of these fan stitches and then we've also got the beautiful border as well which is made up of these and granny stitches and then frills on the edges. So I used for my baby blanket, I will leave the exact dimensions in the description box, but I used five or almost five balls of the Signet Pure Baby in cream, which is obviously what you can see here, but you can use absolutely any yarn obviously. So yeah, let's just crack on and we'll jump straight in with this beautiful baby blanket. So no matter what yarn you're using, you will need to go up at least a half hook size for your foundation chain. I've just found that when using the same size hook as what the yarn recommends, it can sometimes bunch up that foundation chain if your tension's a little bit tight like mine. But I'm going to be using a five and a half millimeter with my yarn and I used a five and a half millimeter for the chain on that cream baby blanket as well. So you want to chain in multiples of six. So obviously yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So you want to complete your chain in a multiple of six until your project is as wide as you need it to be. So for this, for the example blanket that I showed, I did a chain of 102 and then the additional four chains on the end, just for your information. Okay, so once you've completed your multiples of six, you want to add an additional four chains onto the end. So you should have your foundation chain now. So I'm going to switch now from my five and a half to my five, and I'm going to work into the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, and this is our fourth chain. So you're going to treble. So remember I'm working in UK terms here. In the US, these are your double. But we're going to be using treble or double stitches for the whole of the main body of the blanket. So treble into the fourth chain. So yarn over, insert into your fourth chain. Yarn over and pull up. Yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two. So that's going to count as our first, they're almost like V-stitches except we're not chaining anything in between the stitches. So we're going to skip two chains now on your foundation chain and you're going to work five trebles into that third chain. So skip two and then five trebles into the third. So yarn over and insert, yarn over and pull up yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's one, so you want four more, all into that same chain. It's two. Five. And then again you're going to skip two chains and then do two trebles into that third chain along. So skip two and then two trebles. One and two. Okay, so that is how you should be starting to look now. So again, so you'll repeat that all the way along your foundation chain. You'll have your 
two chains that you skip and then five trebles Okay, so that's your five trebles again, and then again you'll skip two and two trebles. So if you want to repeat that all the way along your foundation chain, so you'll have your five trebles, skip two, two trebles, skip two, back to the five trebles, and I will meet you as you get to the end of your foundation chain. So once you've worked that all the way along, you should be finishing with your skip two and then two trebles into that final chain. So complete your two trebles in the final chain because you should always finish on the same as what you started from. So obviously we started with our two trebles so we're going to finish with the two trebles. So you're going to turn your work now and we're going to insert our hook into this very first stitch. So you'll insert your hook Go through the whole of the stitch, getting the V on the top, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through both of those loops. And you can see we've got two vertical parts to this stitch. You're going to go behind the one nearest to your working end, yarn over and pull up, and yarn over, pull through two. And that's just giving us a treble height stitch, but without the gapping that we would get from a chain two. So now we want to start with the opposite of what we started with last time. So this time we want to start with one of our fan stitches. But because we're at the end of a row, we're going to be doing a half fan stitch. So it's going to be three trebles. That stitch you've just done counts as your first. So your next two trebles are going to go down into that space between your two trebles. So yarn over in between those two trebles and complete two more trebles. So you've got three trebles there now. You're going to skip across now to the center of your fan stitch. So you've got five. So that third treble is your center of your fan. So into that third treble of your fan, you're going to do your two trebles. Again, go through the whole of the stitch and complete your two trebles. And then again, you're working in between the trebles. So it's like I say, it's almost like a V stitch. However, you've not got the chain one that you'd normally have. So in between those, that group of your two trebles into that space, you're going to do your next fan stitch. So you're going to do your five trebles into that space. Two, three, four, and five. Okay. And then again, find the center of your fan. So into that third treble, you'll do your two trebles. Okay, you're going to repeat that now all the way along. So your fan will go in between the two trebles on the previous row and your two trebles or your, it's almost like a V stitch as I say, will go into the third treble of your fan. So if you want to continue that and I will meet you in just a sec. Okay, so I've completed my last two trebles into the top of the middle stitch in my fan and then I've got that final two trebles. Well, obviously on this one it's a chain and a treble, but into that space at the very end you're going to work your half fan. So you'll do your three trebles into that space. As I say, you always want to finish on what you started. So on the rows where you start with a half fan, you'll finish with a half fan as well. So that is the first row of your repeat. This next row now will be row two of the repeat. So again, you'll turn 
and we're going to swap back again now. So you're going to do your treble height stitch, so insert your hook into that very first stitch, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, and again behind that vertical part, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through two. So that is your first stitch and then back into that very same stitch you're going to do another treble. So yarn over and into that first stitch do a treble because obviously that is that stitch is the center of what would be a normal fan. So that is your two trebles and then again you're going to skip to in between your two trebles from the previous row and you're going to do your fan stitch. So you're going to do your five trebles. And then again, you're going to find the top of your middle treble from your fan and do your two trebles. And then you'll repeat that all the way across again. And because we started with the two trebles, you should be finishing with two trebles at the other side. Okay, so I've completed my last full fan stitch and then we've got the half fan from the previous row and into that very end stitch. So you'll skip the, the first two of that half fan and into the third, you'll do your two trebles. So if you're not confident about keeping your ends straight, then definitely pop a stitch marker in when you do that first stitch of each round, just so that you can firm up that end placement. So those are your two rows for your pattern repeat. So you're going to complete those last two rows over and over again until your project is as big as you want it to be. And then I will meet you back again and I will show you how to straighten off the last row and then we will start on our border rows. Okie dokie, so when you're ready to finish off and you want to do your final row, obviously I finished on a row where I've got my V and then my fan, but obviously if you finished it on the one where you've got your half fan and then your V, then you'll be able to adjust this last row where as necessary. You can see it's not too bumpy across the top. It doesn't, you don't have to do this final row if you don't want to, because as you add your border, it will flatten it out anyway. But if you want to, you can add this final row. So I'm going to do my stitch to come up as normal. And then I'm going to do a half treble into the next stitch along. So yarn over and pull through all three. And then into the first two, into the first one, sorry, of the fan stitch, I'm going to do a half treble. So yarn over and pull through all three. And then into the three next stitches I'm going to do a double crochet so in the US this is your single so insert yarn over and pull up yarn over pull through two so I'll do that into the next three well three total and then into the next four stitches so it will be the final one of your fan the tops of your V's and the first one of your fan, you will do a half treble. One, two, three, and four. So those four half trebles should take you to the three at the center of your fan, where you will do a UK double into those three and then again half trebles into the next four and 
and then your three UK doubles. So you can continue that all the way along your work now, working your half trebles into the dips as you go down in those four stitches and then your UK doubles into the three at the centre of your fan. So at the very end, I've got three stitches left to work into. I've got my half treble to do into that final one of the fan and then the V here, I'm going to do one half treble into the top of both of those final two stitches. You can see that has just levelled off that final row ready for your border. So when it comes to the border, let me just bring back this one. We have got a round of UK doubles all the way around just to give us a nice base to start from. And we've then got V stitches and granny stitches and then the frill. So there are five border rounds in total. You've got your double crochet round, two v-stitch, one granny, one frill. So your first job is to do your UK doubles all the way around. So I'm not going to show you doing that all the way around because I'm sure you're well used to doing a UK double crochet border. But I'll just start off so I'm going to start off by going straight down one of my sides and then I will finish off this corner as I come to it later. So I'm going to do a chain one and then when I come back later I'm totally going to ignore that. But into the sides of these stitches, so the way I like to place my doubles for border stitches along the side if I've got treble height stitches, which is what I've got here, over two rows I like to place three stitches. So every two rows I will place three stitches over them as evenly as possible. So it's one. Two and three. So that is my first three split over those two rows. And then again, I will do another three split over the next two rows. But you just work, everyone is different when it comes to border placement, but you just want a round of UK doubles or US singles all the way around your project. Okay, so when it comes to a corner space, I like to do one double, chain two, and then back into the same corner space, another double. So your corner spaces should be double, chain two, double in the same space, just to keep those edges nice and crisp. So if you complete your round now of doubles all the way around and I will meet you for the start of our v-stitch round. Okay so I'm back round now I've done my final double chain two double in that last space and then I'm ready to slip stitch to the top of that very first double crochet that we did at the start of our round. So slip stitch so yarn over, pull through both. So you should be nicely bordered now, ready to go. So we're going to start with our V stitches. So I'm going to turn my work around and I'm actually going to slip stitch into the chain two of the corner that I just created. So I'm just going to slip stitch back into that corner. I'm going to chain two which is going to count as my first treble 
and then I'm going to chain another one which is going to count as my chain one and then back into this chain space I'm going to do a treble so that is my first V of my V stitches but in the corners you're going to want a V stitch a chain one and then back into that same corner space another V stitch so your corner chain two spaces will have a treble chain one treble which counts as a V stitch chain one which is just to create the next corner space so into that chain one in between your V stitches you might want to pop a little stitch marker so that you know where to do your corner stitches in the next round but we've so far we've got chain two chain one treble chain one treble chain one and then one final treble back into that same space. You're then going to skip two stitches and into the third stitch you'll do a V stitch. So treble, chain one and treble back into that same space. Skip two, one, two and then V stitch again. So another treble so a treble again, chain one, back into the same space, you'll do another treble. And you'll work that all the way along, so skip two, V-stitch, skip two, V-stitch, and I'll meet you at your corner one more time. Okay, so I'm ready to work my corner space again. So into that chain two, might be a little tricky to spot sometimes, but you've got a chain two space here to work stitches into so you're going to do v-stitch so treble chain one treble that's your first v-stitch for the corner chain one again so you don't normally chain in between your v-stitches but on the corner spaces you will do and then another v-stitch back into that same space so treble, chain one, and treble. And again, you might want to mark that chain one space in between your two your two V stitches, just so you know where to work your corner stitches next time. And then you're back to skipping two and V stitch. So if you want to continue that all the way around, and I will meet you back where we started in just a second. Okay, so I'm back now to where I started. I've done my final V-stitch and I'm ready to close to the top of the chain from the beginning. So at the beginning of the round we did a chain three. So the first two chains count as our first treble and then the third chain is the chain one. So you want to slip stitch into the second chain. Okay, so that is how you should be looking after your first round of V-stitches. Now you can do as many rounds of V-stitches as you like. If you want to create a super fancy one, then that's absolutely fine. You can do that, of course. So I'm just going to start now with my next and final round of V-stitches. So what I'm going to do is slip stitch into the centre of that V chain two which will count as our first treble chain one and then treble back into that same space and then these are our corner stitches from the previous round so we've got v-stitch chain one v-stitch so this chain one space in between your v-stitches is where you'll create your new corner so your new corner will go into there, so you'll have your V-stitch. Chain one. And back into that same space, another V-stitch. So those four stitches and those chains count as your next corner space. Again, if you want to mark the chain one, here 
in between your V's, then you can do that for the next round. And then you're just going to work a V-stitch now into the chain one spaces in between all of your V's. So make sure you work this very first one here. So you'll do V-stitch. And then again, V-stitch into the next and work that all the way along your straight edge. Okay, I'm at the corner part again, so I've got my V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch for my corner. So I'll do my V-stitch into the middle of the V-stitch from the previous row. And then I'll create the new corner stitches into that chain one space. So you'll have your V-stitch. Chain one, again mark that chain one if you want to know where to do them in the next round. And then V-stitch in that same chain one space. And then again continue on your straight edge. So if you complete that second round of V-stitches, and I will meet you in just a sec. Okay, I've done my final V-stitch of the round. Again, we've got that chain three, but we're going to be working a slip stitch into the second chain to close off. And that is how you should be looking after your two rounds of V-stitches. And now we are ready to work on the granny round which is this round here so again I'm going to slip stitch into the middle of that V stitch I'm going to do a chain two which is going to count as my first treble so again I'm still working in UK terms these are your doubles in the US and into that chain one space where we've come up from, I'm going to do two trebles. So that is going to count as our first granny cluster, because the granny cluster is always going to consist of three trebles. We're then at our corner space. So we've got our V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch. So into that V-stitch, I'm going to do a granny cluster, so three trebles. One, two, three, and then into the chain one space, I'm going to do four trebles. So the chain one space between your V stitches in your corners, I'm going to do four trebles. Okay, and then again, in your next V-stitch, you'll do a granny cluster, so three trebles, one, two, three, and then again, to the centre of your next V-stitch, you'll do another granny cluster, so three trebles again. And you'll just continue that all the way along. So one granny cluster into the chain one space of your V-stitch. And I will meet you at the corner space just to confirm <laughs> where all of those stitches need to go. Okay, so corner space time again. V stitch so you'll do your granny cluster into the V stitch and then into the chain one space you'll do four trebles and then again into your next V stitch granny cluster so if you continue those granny clusters all the way around, 
and I will meet you back at the beginning of the round in just a moment. I'm just completing my final granny cluster into my last B stitch and then I'm ready to close off to the top of that chain two from the beginning slip stitch to close and then your very final round is that little tiny frill round again totally optional to add but I just wanted to really finish off so there's no counting or really remembering anything when it comes to this final round we're just going to work UK doubles or US singles and chain stitches. So I'm going to insert my hook into that next chain along, yarn over and pull up and yarn over pull through two and I'm going to, I would mark that stitch. <laughs> I'm going to chain three, skip one stitch and then UK double chain three, skip one, double and you're literally just going to do that all the way around even around your corners you're just going to skip one, double, chain three, skip one and double so a really nice simple easy way to finish off and if you just continue that all the way around and I will meet you to close off for the final time. So my final chain three, I'm back to where I started from and I'm ready to slip stitch to the top of that very first double that we did. So hopefully you might have marked it with a stitch marker and we're literally just going to slip stitch one last time. Chain one, you'll snip off and then pull that out. And you should be left with a really beautiful, elegant, classic baby blanket. Or you may have even gone bigger and done a, an adult size. You can make it obviously any size you like. But I really hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. And remember to subscribe if you don't already. And I will see you for another one really soon. Bye for now.